name's Carl. Um, I've been barbering for around six years now, six and a half years. I was born in Auckland, uh, moved here when I was five or six years old and pretty much just been living here since. So I'd call this my home. Um, struggled with like dyslexia and dyspraxia. Struggled a bit through school trying to do the norms, like understand things that other people understood. Having dyslexia and dyspraxia throughout school really made it quite hard for me to do what everyone else was doing the way that they did it. Um, school back then was kind of made to fit like a certain normal person <laughs> and like having those disabilities kind of caused me to really struggle and, and just end up questioning myself like what am I going to be good at, what am I going to do when I'm older. Um, so I just, yeah, I just kept persisting and my mum helped me through that a lot. She gave me so much confidence, encouraging me, telling me that I'm made for something, I'm, my, I'm going to be skilled at something. And um, anyway, eventually I realised that I was a visual person and um, that was my area of skill um, in visual spatial things. That's how I learnt and how I processed. Uh, so coming to the barber shop was a bit of a journey trying out a few different things to eventually get where I am now. Um, I started off trying out hairdressing. I did two weeks of that and I was like, nah, this sucks. I do not want to do hairdressing. If you didn't know the difference, hairdressing and barbering, there's a bit of a difference. Um, and hairdressing is more, a lot more like longer hair, woman's hair, dyeing hair, that sort of thing. And barbering, you're a lot more focused on the clippers. Um, you learn scissor work too, but the the shorter styles are what you work with most of the time, and that's all I wanted to do was cut hair. Um, so yeah, I did a barbering course up in Auckland for six months, and yeah, no, I don't actually know how long I did that for. <laughs> no. Sorry, I did that for three months. So that was yeah quite quite fun for me. First time moving out of home, doing adult life, um, flatting and all that, um, so it was, it was a lot for me to learn, all that and barbering, but yeah, anyway, it led me to my barbering career, which I've been doing for six years now. When I was 17, uh, when I started out, um, my first three months of my barbering went real good. Um, once I found, or once I'd graduated my course and it was time for me to work in a barber shop, I found I got along with my workmates and my boss and stuff, but it was always a struggle with timing. I take a lot longer than other barbers with things that should be a bit quicker. But I like I take a lot of pride in what I do, and I want to make sure that it's like it's bang on, like it's what the client wants and better. Um, there's been a few times where I'd been asked to drop my quality and just go for quicker haircuts and try and fit more in um, by my previous bosses. Um, and yeah, that kind of motivated me to do my own thing. Like the words I remember hearing were, you'll never make money doing it this way. And yeah, it motivated me to to try, out, try and see if that's true and stick to my way of doing it. Not in a stubborn way, but just to see if it works and just see it through. And so I started up my thing from home and man, it's like, I'm, I love my shop. Like it's, this is my personality in the shop. It's, yeah, I've created it to fit my personality. And it's like people love coming here and spending an hour sitting down, getting their hair cut, chatting, hot towel, whatever. It's yeah, I love it, like people love coming here and I love that about it. When I left my old job, I actually sort of left because I did feel demotivated knowing that like maybe my way of doing it won't earn money and I, I'm not getting any faster, I can't, I can't do them faster so maybe it's not what I'm good at, maybe I should try something else. And But man, I feel so blessed but my my clients followed me, they found me on Facebook and stuff like it was really cool seeing people just coming through and finding me through friends of friends. I think one of the things that's really like kept me going and inspired me is just knowing that like there's a demand for me, like there's people that want to see me. So yeah, I created 
this little shop at my family's house. Thank you to my family. They let me have a little gig here and have all these randoms showing up to our house like every day. I really love people and I love like encouraging people. I love helping people to see the potential in themselves and to feel confident in who they are. And so pretty much that's my heart behind it. That's why I love doing what I do. And I just happen to be good at cutting hair at the same time, I think. Bringing a smile to people's face, making their day a lot better. Those are the two things that I just really love about my job and the fact that I get to meet all these different people from different areas of life, different walks, uh, different occupations, uh, different countries, all sorts. Some of the good experiences that I've had in the barbershop with my clients is just like meeting people that have been through a lot and are willing to open up to me and talk to me about it. Um, it's crazy, like, I don't know what it is about barbering or about me, but these clients, they, they're just willing to talk to me about things that are going on in their life. And it's such a privilege to be able to help people through them and encourage them. And um, like, I've had some amazing experiences where like fully grown men, tough guys, like break down into tears in my barbershop, in my chair, like while I'm talking to them, while they're talking to me, like it's cool. And like coming from a Christian faith, I get to pray for them there on the spot too. And usually, yeah, they leave with a big smile and good haircut. And those, like those are the moments that I really do this for. Like those are what keep me going in the shop. The worst experiences I've had in the barbershop, it's just people not respecting me and showing up late or like not showing up at all. Like I've had a few people that um, they'd book in and I'd call them and text them or something and not hear anything back. Um, so that that's probably like the worst sort of thing that happens in my shop. Um, yeah, just disrespect. But I haven't, I, ever since I started really like with my website and everything, I think people have started taking it a bit more serious rather than just like a guy cutting hair in a shed at his home. Like it's an actual business and so people honour that a bit more now. Things that annoy barbers, usually like if you finish a haircut and you've like, you've got to the very end of the haircut, like you've lined it up and everything and, and then they're like, oh can I get it a little bit shorter? Like it's it's cool if you have to say that, but like <laughs> say it a little bit earlier if you have to, if you can. <laughs> um, yeah, sometimes people show you a photo and it's like, yeah, this is what you want, cool. And like, I don't know, some people's hair just doesn't really work for that. Uh, but then sometimes I see the photo, I'm like, yo, I actually think I might be able to do that better. <laughs> so that works out good. And, yeah. The type of person that is harder to deal with is someone that isn't willing to um, ask any question or talk to you about the haircut um, or anything. It's just like people that come in and don't say much. If someone doesn't tell you that they want something and then you and then you don't do that or that you do something different, then that they might complain after that when you haven't actually heard what they want. Sometimes you just get people that don't fully know how to explain their hair or don't want to put the effort in. Uh, sometimes people ask me if I can do a specific haircut and they give me um, information about that or show me a photo or something and sometimes people will just like, you're the professional, you, you just do it. If you want to become a barber, I recommend like studying through a barber school or doing an apprenticeship. You want to find a good barber shop that can actually teach you the traditional ways of doing things, um, plus how to do modern things too. Um, if you want to find me, if you want to sit down in my chair, have a haircut, have a yarn, uh, you can find me at barbercarl.com and that's Carl with a K. If you guys liked what you've seen, the creative skill, subscribe here or up here, wherever it goes, there, 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 to be everywhere. <laughs> Thank you and yeah, see you guys. Yeah, I'm gonna go
stuff so to get hairy. And then I'm in this. 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 I'm in Because I'm just used to I'm in And then. That's so hard to say. And then the. Right. Do you want me to look into the camera or do you want me to look past the camera like where your arm is? Oh, maybe I'll look at you because it will be yeah, yeah, yeah. rather than looking at a logo. Yeah. yeah. My name's Carl. Uh, I feel like it's weird that I'm looking up. I don't know. Yeah, see you guys. Thanks, man. Oh, the mic. <laughs> is it possible I could look at. Um, the screen, the little screen.